and welcome back to the next reading vlog. Starting off week two, it is the end of the day on Monday. I'm trying to do better with my timing and because a lot of times all I want to do when I come home is just veg and do nothing. And then finally I work up the motivation to check off the few things from my to-do list and by the time I do that to get it done before going to bed it feels like cramming. So I'm working on not doing that which I set myself a goal of at least three out of the five days this week, get home, get right to work. Then I decided to go to Costco. Uh, that qu mm, didn't quite happen but I'm still gonna count today because I have it just sat and vegged. Before I get into what I'm reading this week, Costco has this weird thing where they have self-checkout lanes now, which I like. And they've had those for a while. And I was going up and there were two sets of four. One of them, no one was over there. The other one, there were lots of people there. There were workers there and customers and et cetera. And I'm like, okay, I guess those aren't working. So I went over to the other ones. No, apparently at the self-checkout lane, they have people standing at each of the registers to help you at the self checkout lane. Literally the lady starts, she's like, Oh, this is a lot of stuff. I'm going to have to move this up there. And I go, what are you doing? <laughs> she's like, Oh, I'm helping. And I go, I got this. Like, I'm fine. And then I got to I'm like, well, next time we're here to help. We've started this back up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why it's self checkout. If people want to have someone else ring up their stuff, there's other lanes. It makes no sense to me. Be that as it may, it is now Can't Believe a Thon, and it's time for the focus on middle grades. And I thought that I was not, that that would mean I would have to shift aside some middle grade because I still have two books left on my TBR. And then I realized August doesn't end this week. <laughs> August ends next week in the middle of the week. So I'll have enough time to get to those. So the plan is tomorrow probably to finish Bands of Mourning, maybe today, probably tomorrow. And then I have my Alcatraz books. This one I'll finish fairly quickly because I'm almost through it. On audiobook, I have another like a middle grade arc that I have. And I also have Skander and the Unicorn Thief which I got as an ARC originally. It's long since been published. That's why I need to work on ARCs. And so I'm still going to write a review of it to get my percentage on NetGalley up. So there's five middle grades books. They're not even on my original TBR, but they're middle grades. So I'm going to get those done. Maybe get to I Must Betray You. So that's the plan for this week. We will see if it happens. I don't know why it seems so dark. I wasn't going to update because I didn't read all that much of Bands of Mourning last night, but I wanted to show off some book related mail that I got. A couple of these things I've already unboxed because I think they came yesterday. I even used one today, which is why it feels heavier. I caved. I got merch for Magical Readathon. So we have the Art My Archivist tote. It's so big, it's so comfortable. And I didn't know how the other one would look. I don't need more tote bags, but here we go. Aurelium Academy. This, I believe, are my Magical Reader Time bookmarks, which I'm super excited about. Yeah, they are. So she's got them in this little envelope. Super cool. Yes, it is. Okay, so I got two of them. I got the one that says questing. And of course, the archivist one. I'm so excited. I never thought that I would buy bookmarks. The tote bag and these came from her red bubble shop. Now one of them I'm not gonna be able to wear right away. Oh, it already feels so comfy. It's a hoodie, a really Academy hoodie. So excited about that. I didn't get my house specific in the clothing. Oh feels so comfortable and I love the color and then I love the color of the shirt because of course I had to get a shirt and I got it in this deep red so I am super excited about this now I'm off to go do some strength training so I just filmed my unboxings I have one more unboxing left to do it's Wednesday 
it's fairy loot I couldn't wait because Illumicrate came if you know you know the book that's in that this vlog will go up before but I'm so excited I literally just opened that and was like squealing you'll see that in um my August unboxing video which will come out in I don't know when <laughs> whenever I schedule it I'm just so excited okay I've got to calm down so reading update physical reading has been going really slowly I guess because I've gotten so into bands of warning there's so much put intricately into this book so much is unfolding if I read it quickly I would miss a lot this it's really the middle book like the the well of ascension for era two even though it's the third book in the series because Aloe of Law was sort of a bridge one I still love it so much I love the fact that I don't really have anything this evening so hopefully I will be able to read more the other thing that's been keeping me from reading as much is like first off like I went to Costco after school one day that took up a lot of time and I just have been getting to the end of the day with not a lot of time and I haven't done any cross stitching or anything like that yesterday I went out to do strength training at my mom and stepdad's house so again time taken up I plan to finish that maybe today on the audiobook front I switched from listening to an indigenous people's history of the United States to Scander and the Unicorn Thief because with my physical book I wasn't reading a middle grade so I wanted to read and start a middle grades and I got the arc for this a while ago since the book came out in March I'm a little behind on reading that arc so I'm not actually reading the arc because I didn't download it before it got archived I am listening to it on audiobook from Scribd I think I love it it's so intriguing I love the narrator there's a presence there's a vibe with it that reminds me of when I first discovered the world of Harry Potter it's not flowing like that at all but there's also something with the narration part of it like the Jim Dale aspect of it the narrator's not Jim Dale but he's doing such a good job with the voices and really embodying them and the take on unicorns in here unicorns are not the, the the white fluffy creatures with the pearlescent horn they're like monsters and there's things going on with the unicorns and the main character might actually be a villain origin story I'm really intrigued I'm about 20% into it I am loving it I really hope to finish bands of mourning today so I can get to Alcatraz versus the evil librarians all those books so that I can be caught up and ready to start the stormlight archive next month although I almost shared the, the battle book there's a large part of me that wants to um just read this book I don't know maybe I will checking in again same day I've got exactly 100 pages to finish I'm gonna take a break I'm going to go cross stitch and listen to the scanner and the unicorn thief but a character was just introduced and the stuff that he is telling like other characters is blowing my mind like I can't say anything because it spoils just about everything but something an event that I thought was settled from book one it's just kind of been unraveled <laughs> my mind is spinning right now I love this book the nuances with the plotting and making everything work and the world building like the world is the world is exploding getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger like I have no coherent words so I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go cross stitch excuse the I don't even know what I look like because it's about better but and I probably should wait to film this update until I can think more coherently I just finished this book if you've read it you know I had 100 pages left literally exactly 100 pages it took me longer to read this 100 pages than I imagined I had planned to read for an hour but I'm like I, I can't I can't stop now once the Sander Lanch gets going nothing stops it absolutely nothing this book I said it about 20 pages from the end and then he kept going favorite Mistborn novel not even kidding might rank as my favorite Sanderson novel so far of course I haven't read Stormlight Archive this book the level of so you see this woven tapestry back here that's the skill that Sanderson has in creating this plot each one of those threads is a little bit in the plot that you didn't imagine had happened or could happen or should happen but when that thread comes into place you know 
that fits right there. I should have a hollow mind right now with the number of times that Sanderson blew my mind in this book. Can't talk about any of it because spoilers for all the previous books. That is what I love so much about Sanderson's writing, the intricacy in the craft. He had, he definitely has a plan from the beginning, laying it all out, pulling these things. It's not like he, he wrote the final empire and then went, oh, I can make a series out of this. No, I don't think he could have written that without knowing what he was going to put in here. Maybe some of the details change. Maybe, I don't know. So first off, the way he put that epilogue in there, this book was published in 2016. The sequel and conclusion is coming out this November, six years later. I cannot imagine reading that ending and having to wait six years to find out. I have to wait all of September, October, three months, too long. I want the next book right now. And I was gonna wait to buy it to get uh, the paperback version, but now probably gonna buy the ebook version so I can read it right away. Then you have his character work, which obviously plot is his strong suit, but he learned from what he did in era one with that cast of characters and built such amazing characters in here. I love every single one of them. The things that happened for these characters and how it built and how it shifted and how it changed. There was, there's a character in here that I didn't like what, not that I didn't like the characters, I didn't like what Sanderson was doing. Or at least how Wax was viewing that other character. The reader could almost be convinced of that. And I can't say who that character is. But then when things wrap up towards the end, it just makes so much sense. I can't even say why that development is so good. I almost did, but then spoilers. Again, I should have waited for more coherent thoughts, but this is fresh reaction. Hands down, my favorite Mistborn novel. Now, I'm nervous. I am nervous for what this means for the Lost Metal. Earlier, I don't know when, previous vlog or something, I, I called it the 11th Metal. That's one of the novellas or short stories in Arcanum Unbounded. No, the Lost Metal is the third book and or seventh overall Mistborn book. I don't know how people can say they don't like Era 2. I love Era 2. Had a little bit of a lull with Shadows of Self, but I think for me that was just headspace. These Mistborn novels, I will definitely come back to and reread someday. I probably will count how many times I said how much I love this book when I go back and edit it, but I don't care that it took me four days to read this and I expected to finish it in two. Well, it took me four days of this week. I don't remember when I started it. I expected to finish it by Tuesday. Mm -mm. This book deserved to be savored. Well done, Sanderson. Okay, so I have managed my hotel. I'm running a half marathon in the morning in Asheville and you had to pay extra to pick it up the morning of. I also didn't really want to get up early. It's a really weird filming location because there's a mirror right there and a mirror right there and I keep seeing my movement. And I move a lot when I talk. Anyway, so I made it to Asheville and let's just say if you know anything about Asheville, it's not my scene. It's fine. It's just not my scene. It's the hippie artsy type. That's just not me. Came out by myself because my mom's running a conference. <laughs> well, she wouldn't say that she's running it, but it basically wouldn't run without her. So she can't run this with me. I left right after school. So I packed everything this morning. Wow, that took forever. Well, not, it didn't take forever, but a rush because I realized when some of my students discovered the channel that my last vlog, I forgot to undouble speed it, what I do for editing. So yeah, I had to upload that this morning. On the way up, I listened to more of Skander and the Unicorn Thief and I still really love it. There's a lot that screams like magic school, Harry Potter vibes. It has a lot of those tropes. It has a lot of that formula. It doesn't follow it exactly. It has the vibes, it has the feeling and I love it. I love the characters, you know, the, the found family that Skander has, but also he's wrestling with whether or not he's good. 
it reminded me of Harry's battle with when he finds out that he's a partial tongue and only Slytherins and they're all bad and but that battle didn't didn't feel as genuine as this one does. I don't know, it's almost like, like he knew he wasn't bad, but like there's conflictions here for Skander and it just has developed really well. I brought my Alcatraz books because I'm almost done with one of them. But now that I'm sitting, all I want to do is set up my computer, watch booktube and eat my poke. So I think that's what I'll do for the rest of the night. Well, not the eating part, but watching booktube and etc. I might pick up the book. I might not. We shall see. Okay, so I am back after the half marathon. It went really well. Incredibly hilly. There was this one hill where, and I hadn't walked up until that point except for three miles to chew the fruit snacks that I ate, but it, it went up and you thought at the horizon point basically that you might get a little bit of a relief. No, the road just turned and still went uphill. And at that point I went, Oh, good grief out loud. And the guy who happened to be walking next to me went, yeah, I know. Right. There were so many hills, but I still managed 205, which is nowhere near the time that I ideally want to get. But for those hills and with that level of humidity, I'll take that because I ran it really well and enjoyed my time. I drove back and I didn't listen to an audiobook on the way back. I don't know why, but I didn't feel like getting into Skander and the Unicorn Thief again because I have reached about the three quarter mark and I figured that I might also reach the climax of the story and I just wasn't ready to listen to that. So I listened to podcasts on the way back, but after getting back and doing some things around the house, I have finished two books now. Granted, I had read a significant portion, of, over 50% of both of these books. First off, I finished Alcatraz and the Scrivener's Bones. I don't know what it was that day that I was reading it for part of the final book support group readathon, where I just wasn't getting into it. I definitely got into it more today and enjoyed it a lot more. Not necessarily a lot more, but, but I was flowing with the story better and I really like how he ended it. Although a portion confused me. Finally knocked this one off the list. I'm not going to go to the other books in the series yet. Seeing as how it's Saturday of the Can't Believe a Readathon, I finished one middle grade book. I will probably finish the second one. The only one that I will have read from start to finish this week. You know, when you have Bands of Mourning, that amazing book, I won't begrudge myself that. The other book that I finally finished, Burgermeister's Daughter. I must have put this on my TBR back when I was in school for my master's and when I was taking either Renaissance or Reformation because that's around the time period. This wasn't a poorly written book. It also wasn't a super interesting book. Stephen Osment, the author, went, he had an interesting narrative style that didn't make a lot of sense sometimes. Like he'd have whole sections that weren't related to Anna, the girl on the cover, and her ongoing legal dramas with her father and then her siblings about getting the inheritance. It's fascinating though, because a lot more is known about her and this um, ordeal than is normal for that time period and a woman because of the contentious litigation. She was known for being like highly immoral and that's why her dad disowned her, kicked her out, etc. because she didn't get married until she was in her late twenties, like 26. And before that she had had two different lovers, including, uh, Erasmus, the well-known philosopher. She had a lot of issues. Let's just say that at least is what's clear from this. He's spent this whole chunk just going through all of the letters, all of the surviving letters between her and Erasmus and the other guy that I guess she was carrying on an affair with at the same time. But to me, the, the whole thing, yes, it's called Scandal in a 16th Century German Town, but we didn't need all of those letters. He also had a section, several different sections, like at beginnings of chapters that were overall historical stuff, like time period and stuff. I'm like, 
You could just mention that. We don't need to know all of that. We don't need to know the history of the town. That's how we started the book was the history of a town. It was fine. Glad I finally finished it. Oldest book on my TBR. Now gone. Um, I've got a lot still from 2012. I should probably go through my online TBR again and call some stuff, but who knows if I actually will. The next thing I'm going to pick up, I have just two books left from my original Magical Readathon TBR. That is I Must Betray You by Ruta Sepetis. I've already taken the Just Jacket off because I'm about to read it. I think I will be able to read this whole thing this weekend and I'm really intrigued by it. It's an area of history that I don't know a lot about. It's historical, but it's more recent in the historical time frame. This is 1989. So yes, it's a historical novel set within my lifetime. Granted, I was four years old, but it will, it will be really cool to learn more about this. The other book is a nonfiction arc that I got from Library Thing uh, about um, American evangelicalism and their response to Israel and its treatment of the Palestinians, which I'm intrigued for. I just don't know how eager I am to read it. I still will try because I want to actually complete this TBR before I go into September and, you know, get the quest points. Who knows? But I have until Wednesday to get those two books read. If I finish those two, I probably will start to sleep in a sea of stars. Even if I manage to finish those two before August ends, just because to sleep in a sea of stars is so big. Hopefully, I think my September TBR is going up Monday right before this vlog. So that was a long-winded check-in. I might check in again today. Probably not, but I'll definitely check in tomorrow to close off the vlog. Okay, so I just had to come on real quick and talk about this. I'm about 12 pages into the book, and the main character, this is in the synopsis, is battling, well, he's just been turned as an informer, just made an informer for the communist government of Romania to spy on an American diplomat. That part is in the synopsis. And then they have this section here that's an official recruitment report and the name of the diplomat is a character from Fountains of Silence. Ruta Sepetis has done that before that I've noticed and I love it. I love those little connections. I hope everything turns out all right, but I love those connections. Okay, so time to wrap up the vlog. It is Sunday afternoon, probably still gonna read a little bit more. I have been participating in some of uh, J.D. Ray Reed's Patreon sprints this afternoon, which has really helped because I was not focusing this morning. And in those sprints, I managed to finish I Must Betray You. I have really loved and enjoyed every single Ruta Sepetis book that I've ever read. I had no idea that she had only four or five. I think this is the fifth one. The only one that I haven't read yet is Out of the Easy, but I do have it. It's on, it's actually on the cart as opposed to many of the other books. The level of tension in this book, because the main character, um, Christy or Christian, he lives through this book chronicles the very end, the violent end of the Romanian communist regime with the Ceausescu's. For most of the book, there's this level of oppressive surveillance throughout everything. You never know who's an informer, who's telling who what, who is going to turn you in and who's gonna die. I cannot imagine what it would be like to live in that sort of environment or just try to live. Sepetis captures that brilliantly. I wish that she had had more to the novel, but I think that she told the story, she let it unfold as it should. Compared to Fountains of Silence, uh, this book is about 150, 175 pages shorter. Yet, I think this is the length that it needed to be. I'm glad that I have it in hardcover. I'm glad that I decided to pick it up and read it. Well done. That means that I have one book left on the TBR that I set for 
magical readathon at the beginning of the month. And that is this arc that I won, like Birds in a Cage, Christian Zionism's Collusion in Israel's Oppression of the Palestinian People. As you can see, I'm 16 pages in and I've already tabbed it like eight times. I don't think that I'm going to be able to finish this by Wednesday, not because it's bad. I love it. I have often, especially these past few years, wrestled with what it means to be a Christian when so many other Christians are making themselves a stench in the nostrils of the world. My mom sent that, um, that quote to me, that phrase this morning. And I look at my upbringing, which very similar to the author, David Crump, took place in a conservative fundamentalist Christian background. And so many of those things that he was describing in the introduction, I recognized right away from what I was taught. Like my school had these, instead of getting a spring break, we had Bible conference, which meant that we had to attend my freshman year four services a day, my freshman year of high school. And well, there were four services a day. As high schoolers, we didn't have to go to the evening ones. And then from, that point on it was three services a day but when my mom was in school it was five per day a little background aside but i remember one of those messages the guy getting up to preach i don't remember whether or not he himself was jewish but he came from new york city and he spent the entire message detailing all of these oppressive things that had been done to the jews time and time and time and time again in history. Now, are those things true? Yes, but he linked it directly to the state of Israel. Basically was telling us to wholeheartedly support Israel, no matter what anyone else said, and was basing it on things that Crump has already mentioned in this book and the, the interpretation of various parts of scripture. And I remember thinking, in that service, I think I was still in high school. I think I was an upperclassman in high school, but I still remember thinking, and this was before I had sort of come out of being in that environment entirely, but I, I already remember thinking, he does not seem objective here. He seems really biased. And, but I didn't know what to do with it because a lot of the stuff that he was talking about was true. These things had happened in history. I had not matured in my thinking to be able to express what made me uncomfortable. I'm so thrilled to be reading this book. He's already talked about a lot of these different things and some of the things that it actually means. Around me, I have seen a lot of people talk about their deconstruction from Christianity and things that they struggle with. And I have struggled with a lot of the same things and so I have been struggling to find the line where I know I still firmly believe in the God of the Bible. Yet the things that people who say that they also do that, that goes completely against it. And so that's my wrestling. I am taking off the shackles of my background, learning how to move forward, which is why, honestly, why I don't talk a lot about it because it's a deeper subject, doesn't necessarily go along with books and, and reading, yet it does. It's complicated and not a lot of people talk about it. I am really, really excited to get into this and dig into this. I'm just a little bummed that there's no audiobook because my mom doesn't have a lot of time to read stuff physically, but I know that she would really want to read this. So I'm actually going to talk to her. I'm going to bring this with me to church tonight and let her read some of the quotes that I've already tabbed up. So this one will probably take me a little while to get through, but I don't mind that. To finish off the day, I'm probably gonna open Amari and the Great Game. I have an arc of that, even though it comes out or it has just come out. I think it was August 25th or sometime in the August 20s. I have an arc of that and I wanna read it. And it's another middle game and, middle game? It's another middle grade book and could fit a, another quest for Magical Readathon features a game, and there it is, Amari and the Great Game. So I'll probably pick that up, but I'll talk more about that in 
my next vlog, which is going to be the in between week where you have a little bit of August and a little bit of September. So it's really funny uh, to think about to my how optimistic I always am at the beginning of these vlogs. I held up like all three of the Alcatraz in the Librarian books that I have and I read one. Didn't even start another one. I thought for sure that I would get through these, which I did. Well, started this. And I said that I had another middle grades audiobook besides Scander and the Unicorn Thief. If I did, I don't remember where I found it because I apparently didn't check it out. Who knows what I meant by that? So I have all these optimistic plans at the beginning of the week and I rarely ever actually complete what I say I'm going to read. So stay tuned for what I say that I'm gonna read next week. And we'll see if I can actually finally set realistic goals for a weekly reading vlog. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.